All praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakhakwadash. The one to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. This is going to be a lesson going into how the Israelites were given a sacrificial law first, then they was given Yahweh Shai for a sacrifice. And the reason why I'm going to do this lesson is because you got a lot of these Christians out there, right, that they think that somewhere along the line, the sacrifices of of Yahweh Shai passed over to the heathens but Yahweh always had a way for the Israelites to repent from their sins so let me just quickly jump to Leviticus the first chapter this is Leviticus chapter 1 and verse 1 in fact you know what I'm not even going to read all of these right I'm just going to go into how what each verse goes into so Leviticus the first chapter goes into burnt offerings right Leviticus the second chapter goes into meat offerings Leviticus the let me read it in fact. Leviticus chapter one and verse one. And Yahweh called unto Moses and spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man bring you an offering unto Yahweh, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd, and of the flock. So this was something spoken to the Israelites. Alright? Now let's go to the second chapter. Which is still to the same people. And when ye shall offer a meat offering unto Yahweh. His offering shall be of fine flour, and ye shall pour oil upon it, and frankincense, and put frankincense thereon. So that was again for the Israelites, man. Verse 3, chapter 3. And if his oblation be sacrifice of peace offering, if he offer it of the herd, whether it be male or female, he shall offer it without blemish before Yahweh. So again, these are three different types of offerings that was done for the Israelites. This is Leviticus chapter 4 and verse 1. And Yahweh spake unto the... Unto, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of Yahweh concerning things which ought not to be done, and shall do again any of them, right? So this is again for the Israelites, right? Another it is another type of offering, man, a sin offering. Alright? Verse 5, chapter 5. And if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness where whether whether he have seen or known of it. If he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. Right? Then he shall bear his iniquity. So this is again another different type of thing. A trespass offering these are in the fifth chapter. So these are different ways how Yahweh had the ability for an Israelite to repent through sacrifice. Alright, that's why I'm reading this. Because you got a lot of people out there, they get, they get angry at the doctrine, they get angry at rebuke, they get angry at being told what's the right way to do things, right? But then when you ask them what's the right way to do, to tell somebody that they're doing the wrong thing, then they ain't got an answer, man. Because the scriptures are clear. John didn't come eating and drinking and people had a problem with him, man. Yahweh Shai came eating and drinking and they said he had a devil. Yahweh Shai lived his life perfectly and it, loads of people had a problem with him. Because it's not Yahweh Shai, it's not us that they hate when we're telling them these things. Really, it's Yahweh Shai, man. It's Yahweh and Yahweh Shai that these people hate. And they're trying to make out that we have to be perfect in order to tell them anything. But where in the Bible does it say that? They can't find it because it's not in there. Now, I've read that, right? And now I'm going to show in the Bible where it speaks about how the Israelites was given a sacrifice because Yahweh Shai. Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Yahweh Shai, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath Yahweh exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a saviour, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. So where's everybody in that? It's not in there. It's not in there, man. But these people want to try and spew out their mouth and foam at their mouth and try and make out like these things are in there. But it's not in there. It's not in there, man. Now let me read this. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. I'm going to read up. I've wrote down to verse 22. But let's see what it says. But Christ be, but Christ being an high priest. Excuse me. But I'm, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. But Hamashiach being come an high priest of good things to come. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Not made with hands. That is to say not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. But by his own blood entered he entered he once into the holy place, 
having obtained eternal redemption for us. Verse 13, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, right? Because like I already read in Leviticus 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, there was different offerings that Yahweh had gave the Israelites to do for their sins. But then eventually he gave them the ultimate offering, which was going to be done once. So that the sacrificial laws was then done away with. But in the past times past, when the Israelites was following those laws, sacrificing for their sins that they committed against Yahweh, Yahweh didn't give the other nations the ability to commit any, to, to do a sacrifice for the wickedness that they was doing. They didn't have a covenant with Yahweh by where he accepted the blood of bulls and of goats to cleanse them from the sins that they was committing. He didn't do that. But he did it for the Israelites, man. Just like how he didn't give them a sacrifice, which is Yahweh Shai. He always gave his sacrifices and accepted the sacrifices of the Israelites. First, it was of the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling to the sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to purify of the flesh. And now it is Yahweh Shai, which is what I'm going to read. Verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Hamasha Yah, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works, to serve the living power. So if animals was worthy to be sac a sacrifice and cover our sins in the time past, how much more is Yahweh Shai, the only begotten of the Father, worthy? Verse 15, and for this cause he's the meter of the New Testament. That's why he's the one that we have to go to now, because he's the sacrifice that every time we sin and go off, we have to repent and be grateful that Yahweh Shai sacrificed for our sins. Yahweh Shai has replaced those animals that the Israelites was given in times past. Because the other nations was not given sacrifices in times past, man. And that's what these heathens in this world are angry about. They're angry that now we read the Bible for real. They're angry that we actually read the Bible. People are ang get angry that we read the Bible, man. People are angry and have got a problem that we read from the book. But who the hell are they to tell us to stop reading? Who the hell are they to tell us to stop talking? Verse 15, and for this cause is the media of the New Testament, that by means of death, because Yahweh Shai came to die for the Israelites. Isaiah chapter 53. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where they for where a testament is, and in fact, who is the people that was under the first testament? The Israelites, man. Exodus chapter 24 to verse 4 to verse 20, excuse me, verse 4 to verse 8. I'll say it again. Exodus chapter 24, verse 4 to verse 8. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all. While the tester liveth, and Yahweh Shai was that tester, and he had to die. Verse 18. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, which is what I quote, was quoting just a minute ago. Exodus chapter 24, verse 4 to verse 8. Verse 19, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book and all the people, saying, saying, This is the blood of the testament which you have enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the tabernacle and the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things by the law, excuse me, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. But the ultimate shedding of the blood came through Yahweh Shai, giving his sacrifice for the sins of the Israelites, man. That's what the ultimate, that's what the ultimate sacrifice came from. Let me carry on in Hebrews chapter 9. I mean Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 10. By which, by the which will we will we Excuse me, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahweh Shah Mashiach once for all. Now, some Christian out there will say, see, he's talking about all people, but it's clearly written as to the book. The book, this book, is clearly called the book of Hebrews. Everybody is not a Hebrew. Everybody does not even extend, descend from Abraham to be even considered as a Hebrew in general. On that branch term, neither does everybody come under the second portion of being an Israelite to be called a Hebrew Israelite verse 11 
and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered once sacrifice for once one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down on the right hand of Yahweh. Because when we were sinning in the times past, right, we had to continue sinning. We had to continue not sinning, but to continue doing them sacrifices over and over again, man. Because we wasn't purged completely. But Yahweh Shai gave one sacrifice, which was his life, one time. So we don't have to keep doing that over and over again. And when Yahweh Shai comes in the second time round, he's going to change us into ultimate righteous vessels, man. We're going to be changed. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 20. Verse 12. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And that's for the sins of the Israelites, man. It's not for the sins of everyone. Because like I already showed, in the ancient world, in times past when Moses was still alive, right, and the laws were getting given to the Israelites, the Israelites was also given the laws, but it was also given a custom that they were supposed to keep to sanctify them and to sacrifice for sins that they committed, for trespasses that they committed, because Yahweh knew that they was going to sin, but eventually ended up sending them the ultimate sacrifice, which was the only begotten son. But these Christians don't know anything, man. Verse 13. From henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering have he perfected forever them that are sanctified. Therefore, that's the reason why sacrificing animals is no longer necessary for the Israelites. Because we have Yahweh Shai. Hamashayak. Now let me carry on reading another scripture that I wrote down. I've, kept, I've, kept, I've said Exodus a couple of times, so I'm going to read it. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Israel. So it wasn't for everybody. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins. And of half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, which would have been Israelites. And they said, all that Yahweh have said, will we do and be obedient? Now we know that they wasn't obedient. So therefore Yahweh was tired of them doing these animal sacrifices and said, you know what? I'm going to send my son for a sacrifice for these people. And now they're going to have to come through him. So he's God. That's what made him the mediator of the new covenant. If you don't want to get down with you what Yahweh Shai is saying, and you don't want to believe that Yahweh Shai existed, you don't want to believe that Yahweh Shai sacrificed for his sins, but then you ain't getting access to that new covenant in the first go round, you're going to get it with shame and everlasting contempt if you're an Israelite, man. And if you're a heathen, you're never getting it. Because it's not for you. Hebrews 8 and 10 does not speak about any heathens being up in there, man. It doesn't mention them, man. Neither does the book of Jeremiah, the 31st chapter, to the 34th verse. You don't mention them. Verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the ordinance of the people. And they said, all that you have said, we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which you have made with you concerning all these things. And Moses went up, and Aaron, and Nadab, and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. So where's the heathen mentioned in that, man? There wasn't no heathens mentioning that old covenant. There wasn't no heathens that was given a custom for sacrifice for their sins in the ancient world in times past under the law of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, which some people call the laws of Moses, but it's not Moses' laws, it's Yahweh's laws, right? And when we sin, we're not sinning according, we're not sinning against Moses, we're sinning against Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. We're sinning against the almighty power, Yahweh. So these people that are saying these things, they don't know what they're talking about, man. They're unlearned, they don't have the answers, because they wasn't given a covenant with Yahweh by where they was told if you do these things, you're gonna get the laws. You're going to get blessed. And if you don't do these things, you're going to get curses. Do on me chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of Yahweh thy power, to observe and to do all his commandments which are commanded this day, that Yahweh thy power will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. That's not talking about everybody, man. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, 
if thou will not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh thy power to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which are commanded this day that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee that wasn't told to every nation that was told specifically to the Israelites and that's why whenever we were sinning when you read the book of Judges whenever we were sinning Yahweh sent one of these filthy heathens to come up against us but when they was doing wickedness they was allowed to because when they overcame us and took us over and us in captivity they didn't start following the laws that we were supposed to follow they never have did that there's never been a nation other than the Israelites that have kept Yahweh's laws the time when for the heathen to start keeping the Yahweh's laws is going to be when we're in the charge when we're under the new covenant making them follow the laws of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai with a rod of iron that's when Amos chapter 3 and verse 1 hear this word that Yahweh have spoken against you old children of Israel it's the whole family which I brought from the land of Israel saying so this isn't being spoken to everyone you only have I known of all the families of the earth therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities the Israelites man so don't get your neck rigid if you get told to repent don't make your neck stiff if you get told to repent man because the person telling you to repent cares and it doesn't matter how they're saying it. If they say to you, you need to fucking repent. Right? If they say, you ask, better repent. Or you're going to get fucking killed, man. Right? It don't matter the way they're telling you to repent. It don't matter the way they're saying it. Because if what they're saying is right, then what they're saying is right, man. Because there's never been a time in the Bible where anybody told people to repent and to change their ways. And people accepted it. It never mattered what way. You've got these so-called Christians out there that are bogged out. That they're just out, out on the street saying, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God is love, God is love. They're literally pre preaching it that way. And you got these wicked people in the world that don't even want to hear that. They don't even want to hear that false doctrine about repentance. So they definitely ain't going to want to hear the real way. Let me read this. Everyone wants to try and make out like the Israelites don't know what they're talking about, man. The Israelites know what they're talking about. <clears throat> this is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 6. For I am Yahweh, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. In the past, Yahweh gave the Israelites a law that are the things that are pleasing to Yahweh. That will, if they do them, they're going to receive good things. And if they don't receive them, they're going to be cursed. The Israelites didn't do them. Verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, ye are gone away from my ordinances. And they have not kept them because we haven't been keeping them. Return unto me and I'll return unto you. Say if you have of hosts, but ye say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me, but ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? And that's what a lot of Israelites are saying. And they're saying, well, how we ain't robbed you, I'm, 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 I'm not sinning. That's what they say. I'm not sinning. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm a good person. I'll give money to charity. I'll, 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 I'll give clothes. I'll give my old clothes that I don't want to wear no more and that are clogging up my house. I'll give them to charity. I'll take them to the charity shop. Right? They say that. Oh, I'll give one. If I see a homeless guy on the street, I'll give him one pound. You know, I'm a good person. No, you're not a good person. There's nobody that's a good person. If the only person to ever walk the earth that could have potentially called himself good didn't even agree that there was good, they said there's only one good and that's the father. Verse 8. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 8 Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me But ye say wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings Ye are cursed with a curse We're under the curses man Let's not play games We're under curses man That's why there's discrepancy after discrepancy Between a man with his woman There's discrepancy after discrepancy Between a brother and his brother There's discrepancy after discrepancy Against a sister and his sister A child and his child Within work Within anything that you do man that's why you don't get no respect in the world because you're cursed with a curse. And you can try and say you're not cursed with a curse. But if you read Leviticus, the 26th chapter, if you read Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, you'll see that you are cursed, man. If you read Isaiah 3 and 16 as an Israelite woman, a so-called black woman, and you read that it says that you're going to lose your hair, you will see that you've lost your hair, man. So let's not play. Verse 9, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. So every single person from the nation has did something wrong one time or the other, man. But the only people that are going to be forgiven for that 
is those that are willing to repent, man. Not those that stiffen their neck and cry about the way they're being told to repent. And get on the comment board if someone's saying something and say, oh, I'm tired of you swearing. Because the people that are lying about the Bible the most, they don't swear, so-called swear, or use rude speech. They don't effing blind, but they're lying though. When you're watching these Tony Blairs, these Rishi Sunaks on the TV, they ain't swearing. When you're watching Bill Gates on the TV, he ain't swearing. When you're watching Nigel Farage, right? When you're watching that other weird Edomite man that's to do with the whole me medicine thing, man. I can't remember his name, man. I can't remember his name, man. The weird Edomite right now that's got the glasses that's to do with that whole, the whole um, stab and jab things. Him. He don't swear. But what's he making people do? Though? What's he up to? So is swearing a sign that somebody's evil? I don't think so. Is so-called rude speech a sign that somebody's a bad person? No, it's not. No, it's not, man. Verse 9. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And that now is talking about repenting, man. Repent, man. And that goes for me too. We all better repent, man. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now, herewith, say after your hour of hosts, if I will not open your, if I will not open your wind, so like here, if I will not open you, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, alright, that's what we're hoping for, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, so we're hoping, if man, let me read that again, verse 10, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, say if you have hosts, if I will not open your windows of heaven, the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, because when we get blessed, man, it's going to be blessing and Tom blessing, man. This ain't what it is for us, man. And the hour is going to continually stir up more and more in our lives, man. Until where, man, yeah, let me just read this, man. Verse 11. I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. He's going to take down slimy E. And I'll rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. Say if you have hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land. Say if you have hosts. And that definitely is what he's talking about now, man. That definitely ain't what he's not. It's not that time right now. We're not in that right now, man. We ain't blessed like that right now. But the point of this lesson was to show that the Israelites and not everybody was given a curse for their sins. And let me get this in fact. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yahawashai, for he shall save his people from their sins. He's going to save the Israelites from their sins. And on that note, I'm going to say all praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakaar Kodash. The one on the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elected nation of Israel. Shalom.